Hello and a welcome to your mom's favorite channel. And today I'll show you how to make some homemade crispy crackers and some delicious corn salt chips in the comfort of your own kitchen. But before we get to that, I want to show you something cool. A good friend of mine made me a brand new handmade cutting board and I had the pleasure of seasoning it. Seasoning a cutting board means that you're sealing the untreated wood with some oil. And for this, you always want to use a good quality food grade oil. So I opted for olive oil imported all the way from Greece. And with that said, here she is. And I personally think she's a beaut. It's made from kayak wood and it even had my logo laser engraved into it. Show my friends some love by leaving this emoji in the comments below. Donkey Sean. So, let's get cracking. First, you'll need some bread flour, some vegan butter, optionally some flavored oils, I like sesame and truffle oil, any spices that you like, and for the corn salt chip, you would ideally use masa harina, but I don't know where to get that in South Africa, so I'm using polenta. Another cool thing I want to show you is I made some pizza flavored spices using one dehydrated red onion, a heap tablespoon of tomato paste, and two green peppers. Yes, two green peppers turned into just that. So I let them dehydrate for two days to make sure that they are fully dehydrated, threw it into a spice blender and blended it into a fine powder. Hmm, green pepper smoke. Don't breathe that. I must say the green pepper is surprisingly sweet. And this is the onion powder. You might think why make onion powder when you can just buy this store-bought stuff? Well, why the fuck not? And could this technically be a tomato leaf? I don't know. And this one tastes like concentrated tomato paste powder. Okay, let's make our first batch of crackers. In a mixing bowl or your food processor, add 150 grams of bread flour, three grams of salt, one gram of garlic powder, one gram of onion powder, one gram of forgetting that I just made onion powder, a pinch of smoked paprika, and then 70 grams of vegan butter. And for a little extra flavor, you can optionally substitute five grams of the butter for five grams of any flavored oils. And then nutritional yeast. You can add about a load or so. And then we mix it. You can do this by hand if you don't have a food processor. Once everything is nicely mixed, gradually add some cold water, one tablespoon at a time, until a crumbly dough starts forming. And depending on your flour and the humidity, the amount of water you will need might be different. But three tablespoons of water got me to this stage. The dough should be soft but not sticky. And then we'll need a clean work surface. Turn your dough out onto your work surface and start working it into a little ball. And don't forget to give it that mandatory dough slap. Divide the dough in half and keep the one half covered in plastic wrap or sealable container while not in use to prevent it from drying out. Lightly dust your work surface, your dough ball and your rolling pin with some flour. And then roll your dough out until it's about 1 to 2 millimeters thick. And at no point should it be sticking to your work surface, so regularly dust it with some flour. And once it's rolled out, you can place it on some baking paper or baking sheet. This will make cutting and moving it around just a bit easier. I rolled this to about a millimeter and a half in thickness. And we have to cut this before baking. You can use a knife or one of these little pastry cutters. And feel free to cut this into any shape that you want. For this batch, I went with triangles and I might have been able to do this a little bit better. And then we place this into a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius. And while that's in the oven, I'm going to prepare my polenta. This stuff is way too coarse as it is, and I'll be making it finer in my spice grinder. For the corn chips, I'm using 75 grams of polenta and 75 grams of bread flour. So I blended this for about a minute, and I don't think I'll get it any finer than this. Our first stage of baking is done. So we'll take the crackers out, then lightly brush or spray the surface with some plant-based milk. And now you can add stuff like pepper, some flaky salt, herbs, spices, or whatever you want. And place it back into the oven for another five to 10 minutes or until they go golden brown. And as you can see, these are hot, watch out. They puffed up quite a bit, but let's let them cool down first. Don't cover them while cooling as that will soften them. And while these are cooling, let's start with the other half of the dough. And I'll be dividing this into two pieces just to show you the difference the thickness of the dough makes while baking. The one half is roughly a millimeter thick and the other half I rolled out as thin as I could get it. It's almost transparent. I cut these into rectangles and threw them into the oven for five minutes. And instead of using plant-based milk, you can also use some olive oil to add more herbs and spices on top of the crackers. So the first batch is cooled down and I think I should have cooked them a little bit longer. They're not as crispy as I wanted. So I'll throw them back in the oven again later. But first, Nori decided to come say hello. Hello Nori. Does Nori want a cracker? Oh, just rubs. Okay. Well, you want to say something? 
Okay, Nori, I think that's enough now. Let's say goodbye. Goodbye, Nori. So, the first five minutes of baking is done. Brush the crackers with a little bit of olive oil. And for this batch, I'm adding some sage and some of this lemon and coconut peri-peri spice. And then throw them back in the oven until they go golden brown. And immediately you'll see a difference from the first batch. These are very crispy and they also didn't bulge out like the first batch. And that's just because these were rolled out thinner. The ones on the left were the thinner ones and they seem to have smaller bubbles, but they were also much crispier. The thicker ones were still pretty crispy though. And now we'll do the corn style chips. So it's 75 grams of polenta, 75 grams of bread flour, some random amounts of my homemade spices, three grams of salt, a big pinch of oregano, a load of nutritional yeast, and 70 grams of vegan butter. And then mix everything and scrape the sides of any of the butter sticking to the side and gradually add the cold water. And with this batch, I only added two tablespoons of cold water. The dough started coming together but felt very brittle because of the polenta, so I added another heap tablespoon of bread flour. And that seemed to have helped quite a lot. The dough still felt a bit different but it was holding together nicely. And then the same as before, turn it onto your work surface and work it into a little ball. Divide the dough in half, keeping the one half covered, and I'll be showing you two different methods. This half I'll be baking, and the other half I'll be deep frying. And same as before, flour everything, roll it out, put it onto your baking paper or your baking sheet, cut them into your desired shapes. I'm going with triangles again, cause you know, Illuminati. Place them in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. So these are the ones from the very first batch. I put them back in the oven and I might have forgotten about them for a little bit. But at least they are crispy now. And they kind of taste like hollow pretzels. So I'll take that as a win. And here's our baked corn style chips. And they actually look pretty, it's hot. So let's let them cool down a bit. Just toss everything on there and then spread them out. These will still feel soft while they are cooling. So let them cool down first and they're still hot. So while these are cooling down, let's fry up the next batch. On high heat, add some oil to a pot or skillet and heat the oil to 210 degrees Celsius. Carefully lower the chips into the oil to avoid splashing. Let them cook for about 10 seconds per side and then place them on a paper towel to drain the excess oil. This is a chip made from the same dough as the crackers and I wanted to see how these come out when fried. And this clip is in real time just to show you how quickly they fry from start to finish. So when cooking these, you have to give your undivided attention or you might burn them. And then one last batch of crackers. I just want to show you another way of putting stuff on the crackers. I sprinkle the dough with some sesame seeds and lightly press them into the dough with a rolling pin and then place them in the oven for five minutes. The one half I'll brush with some olive oil and sprinkle with some nooch and the other half I'll spray with a little bit of plant-based milk and sprinkle with some nooch and place it back into the oven. And this is just to test which of the two will help stuff to adhere to the crackers the best. So this one was with the oil. I think the oil kind of makes them go a bit more crispy. And this one was with the milk. Hmm. My verdict would be that they are both equally shit. But let's plate up these crackers real quick. So here's an idea for a snack tray. Some pesto, tomato and pickled onion, vegan cream cheese, some dip with your chips. And this could be perfect for your next party or watching the game with your friends or family or whatever you do for fun. This could be a cool project to make with your kids. This could also be a pretty cool gift for Father's Day. You could call it something like Sally's Artisan Craft Crackers or whatever the f*** your name is. And making all of these crackers and chips from start to finish only took me about two hours. So these are the fried corn style chips. These are the baked ones and these are the fried cracker chips. And I must say they actually did have a pretty distinct pizza flavor. So I'm pretty chuffed about my homemade spices. I just added them all together with some salt, some oregano and a fuckload of nutritional yeast. And now I can make almost anything taste like pizza. The crackers by themselves are pretty good, but adding some toppings to it mm, makes it so much better. Anyways, if you like this recipe, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, like this video, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in a comment below. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.